Hello everyone, I'm Ken Van Dyne. I lead the Ubuntu desktop and community teams at Canonical. I'm very excited to be part of the first ever UbuCon Asia. I hope everyone has a great experience virtually, no matter where you may be located. We're on the verge of releasing Ubuntu 21.10, so of course I'll cover what's new in Ubuntu desktop. I'll follow that up with a peek into what we've been up to with Flutter. But first, I'd like to talk about some exciting things that's been going on in Ubuntu this year. Earlier this year, we officially rebooted the community team at Canonical, who are responsible for supporting and promoting volunteer contributors like the ones who organized, promoted, and are now attending UbuCon Asia. While the team is still growing, we're hiring. This shows the renewed commitment Canonical has to the Ubuntu community. The community team has been busy. Along with the desktop team, they help revive Ubuntu on Air, which streams on both YouTube, where it began years ago, and Twitch. The desktop team began hosting monthly streams called Indabas, a South African term that means meeting of important people. The Indabas bring together the desktop and community teams, along with community guests, to discuss things like the Open Printing Foundation and CUPS, the GNOME desktop, Flutter, and more. The community team hosts their own weekly office hours where they chat with community members from around the world, from Portugal to France to Korea, who are involved with Ubuntu in all sorts of ways, from locos to artwork to membership boards, and ask Ubuntu moderation. And now community members are hosting their own streams on Ubuntu on Air. Members from the Ubuntu Unity Remix and Ubuntu Mate teams have become our first two community hosts, and we're always looking for more. The desktop team and community team also paired up to bring back the community desktop wallpaper competition. Community members submitted over 200 photographs, paintings, and other artwork over the summer and then voted on their top 10. The top two of the finalists will be included in the final Ubuntu 21.10 release. And the other finalists will be highlighted in blog posts and other social media. The process for signing the code of conduct as part of the membership application process also got a lot easier this cycle, which was thanks to a proposal from new member, Mark Johnson. The community team, community council, Ubuntu membership board, and employees from across Canonical worked together to see this change through every step from proposal to a new alternative to signing the code of conduct that doesn't involve GPG keys. Hopefully, this move will encourage contributors who have wanted to apply for membership but previously struggled with cryptographic keys to now begin the membership process. One of the community team's unexpected accomplishments was helping the IRC Council and the Community Council move the Ubuntu project from free node to Libera. These groups work together to make sure the IRC channels that still host, host important conversations and official meetings moved as soon as possible to their new home and minimize any disruption to the community. It took some long nights and a weekend or two, but the Ubuntu, Ubuntu community made the migration in one piece. As stressful as things could be, the working relationship between community governance and the community team, and between the community team and the Canonical IS team, kept the situation from being any worse. What's new in Ubuntu Desktop 21.10? Ubuntu 21.10 Impish Injury is the final interim release before the next Ubuntu long-term supported release, Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. What's an interim release? If you're new to Ubuntu release versions and cadence, let me break it down. Every six months, there's an Ubuntu release with a version number that reflects the month and year of that release. So 21.10 will be released in October of 2021, and 22.04 will be released in April of 2022. Of these releases, the April release on each even-numbered year is an LTS, or long-term supported release. The LTS release gets five years of standard support from Canonical. 
the three releases that happen between each LTS is considered an interim release. These releases are only supported for nine months. So what this means is 2110 is going to be the last release leading up to the next LTS. For most users, this itself doesn't mean very much, besides the shortened support cycle. However, developers will want to make sure their applications are going to work well on the next LTS. So this is a great opportunity, opportunity for them to start testing and preparing for 2204. Now that, I've, now that I've gone way too deep into release, ver, release versioning, let's get into some fun stuff. Ubuntu Desktop 2110 will ship with GNOME 40, which is an upgrade from GNOME 3.38 that was shipped in 2104, but not the latest GNOME. GNOME 41 was released on September 22nd with enough changes that we didn't feel like we could include it in 2110 with the level of quality that our users and partners are accustomed to. While we're on the exciting topic of version numbers, you might have noticed that the update from GNOME 3.38 to GNOME 40 looks like a huge jump. It's not. GNOME has updated the version scheme and dropped the leading major number and abandoning the even odd numbers for stable versus development releases. So we went from GNOME 3.38 to GNOME 40. Next would be GNOME 41. Besides GNOME 40, Impish Injury includes the 5.13 Linux kernel, Pulse Audio 15, which includes support for Bluetooth LDAC and aptX codecs, as well as support for HFP profiles, Tracker 3, which is a complete redesign. We're also excited to announce that Firefox, packaged as a snap, maintained by Mozilla, is becoming the default in Ubuntu Desktop. This means that by default, Ubuntu 2110 users will be getting Firefox as a snap delivered directly from Mozilla. This is a great move for many reasons, but most importantly, users will now get the Firefox experience and update, updates directly from Mozilla. Now that we've talked about what's new in Ubuntu 2110 and what our community team has been up to, I'd like to give some additional insight into what we've been doing with Flutter as well as the motivation behind this work. What is Flutter? For those that haven't heard of Flutter, let me explain. Flutter is a UI toolkit for building beautiful, natively compiled applications for mobile, web, desktop, and embedded devices from a single code base. How did we get involved in Flutter? When Google announced intentions of supporting Linux, we jumped on the opportunity to engage with the Flutter team at Google and provide the engineering resources necessary to make it happen. Now that Linux is a platform for desktop applications and Flutter is supported, we are going to continue to work with Google to ensure the platform continues to thrive. Why are we investing? Flutter is a modern development platform with all the features you'd expect. The tooling around Flutter development is pretty impressive with really rich integration with popular development environments like VS Code, IntelliJ, and Android Studio. Flutter is rapidly gaining popularity, particularly in the mobile application space. We believe if we make desktop platforms compelling to Flutter developers, some of them will choose to publish their apps for Linux as well as, well as other desktop platforms. Where will Flutter for Linux be used? We see Flutter for Linux as a compelling platform for desktop, IoT, kiosks, and embedded systems. As part of our enablement work to bring Flutter to Linux, we've worked to make it very easy for application developers to publish their applications for Linux to the Snap Store the App Store for Linux. This can be done with the Flutter extension in Snapcraft. See snapcraft.io for details on how you can package your Flutter application. Now that we've done this enablement work for Flutter on Linux, we've been building Dart packages that we feel provide interesting integration points on Linux. They can be useful for application developers as well as package and plugin developers that want to add Linux platform support. Some of these packages include Dbus, Bluezy, Desktop Notifications, Network Manager, G-Settings, U-Disks, U-Power, and more. Application developers using Flutter to build their applications have total control over the visual appearance of their application. 
Flutter apps do not adopt a system-wide theme, as many traditional Linux apps do. Ubuntu has a distinctive style that we call Yaru, which is seen throughout the Ubuntu experience via the Yaru theme. We thought it was important to provide the Yaru style for Flutter app developers to utilize. If you want your application to follow the same style as the rest of the def default Ubuntu desktop experience, or if you just love our Yaru style, you can easily utilize the Yaru Flutter package to apply the style to your app, even when run on other, other platforms like Android, Mac, etc. Here's a quick look at what a Flutter app using the Yaru style looks like. Our first application we're developing for Ubuntu with Flutter is our new desktop installer. Our previous installer has served us very well, but depended on various bits of deprecated technology, making it difficult to maintain over time. Ubuntu Server has been using Subiquity as an installer for years now, making it a well-established choice when choosing to replace our existing installer. However, Subiquity isn't graphical, which of course is not desirable for a desktop operating system. So we started this project to build a graphical front end to Subiquity. This allows us to leverage existing technologies that are well proven to work well and are well supported while giving it a nice fresh appearance. Here's a short demo of the new installer in action. Now that WSL, Windows Subsystem for Linux, supports graphical applications, we thought it would be great to offer a graphical out-of-the-box experience to configure Ubuntu on WSL. An interesting point to make here is we were able to use the new desktop installer project to produce the WSL configuration UI. It's the same code base as the installer, just a different user journey through the interface, all driving the Subiquity backend. Here's a short demo of the WSL setup. So what's next? As Flutter started out as a mobile UI toolkit, the toolkit doesn't have a notion of multiple windows. We're working on a design specification as well as implementation for full multi-window support across all Flutter platforms. This would give app developers targeting desktop apps the flexibility to create proper dialogues, pop over menus, etc. We're also excited to announce that we've partnered with Infertase to work on bringing a pure Dart implementation of Firebase Core and Firebase Auth to Linux. What is Firebase and why is it important? Firebase is a platform for developers to utilize for many tasks that require the cloud. It's a backend as a service. 
Applications can utilize Firebase for tasks such as login, onboarding, etc. Now that we've talked about why we're interested in Flutter, what we've done thus far with Flutter, and what our next steps are, I'd like to do a brief demonstration to show you just how easy it is to get started developing a Flutter application on Ubuntu. Check this out. As I mentioned earlier, the integration of Flutter with popular development tools is impressive. I'm going to give a brief demonstration of installing Flutter and Visual Studio Code, then continue to create a new Flutter project and demonstrate some of the integration points. We'll start off with opening Ubuntu software and searching for Flutter. Simply select Flutter from the results and click Install. Now that the Flutter SDK is installed, we do need to enable desktop Linux support in Flutter, as it's not yet enabled by default in Flutter Stable, but that should be changing soon. Open the terminal and run flutter config enable linux desktop. Flutter will download the latest version from the selected channel, by default stable, and enable Linux desktop support. When this is complete, it'll say Flutter is initialized. You can run the flutter doctor command to verify everything is configured correctly. Now that the Flutter SDK is installed and configured, you can install Visual Studio Code in a similar manner. Open the Ubuntu software app, search for VS Code, and simply click Install. Now that VS Code is installed, let's open Visual Studio Code Then navigate to Extensions, here simply search for Flutter, and install the Flutter extension. Once installed, you'll notice the Dart extension is also installed. This gives you everything necessary to build a Flutter application using Visual Studio Code. To create a new application, you need to open the command palette, either by clicking on the gear on the bottom left and selecting command palette or using the keyboard combination Control Shift P. This will open up a search dialog where you can type Flutter. You'll see the first option will be new Flutter application. Select that. Choose the location to store your project and give your project a name. This will create a stub application with a very simple UI. When Flutter Create is complete, you'll notice it opens main.dart. This is your main application source file for now. You can build and run your application in debug mode by hitting F5. This will, this, will do, this will compile your application natively and run it. Let's talk about Hot Reload. Flutter Hot Reload is simply amazing. Let me demonstrate. 
Scroll in main.dart to the line where it sets the title for the main page. That'll be the line that says Flutter Demo Homepage. While your app is running in debug mode, you can actually edit this line. And when you save it, it will automatically reload the UI to show you what you've changed. As you can see, it's quite simple to get everything you need to create your next great Flutter app using Ubuntu. And remember, Flutter is multi-platform, so you can easily publish your application for other platforms as well, not just Linux. Canonical is committed to making Linux a compelling platform for Flutter app developers. If you would like to get involved, come find us on discourse.ubuntu.com. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy the rest of UbuCon Asia.